Hello and welcome to New Mexico Rising. My name is Dan. On this week's program, we're getting ready for Valentine's Day. You gotta show yourself and maybe your pet some love. So you're never gonna run out of ways to say I love you. These cats need all of the support that we can give to them. All that and more right here on New Mexico Rising. Summer's on the horizon. And when it comes to the perfect opportunity for families to create those unforgettable memories, you know, Today, we're going to be talking some summer travel. Uh, travel. You know, it, it's a little while out, but, you know, it strengthens family bonds, introduces kids to the wonders of new cultures. So joining us live from Disney's Castaway Cay in the Bahamas is Yvette Rios, a travel expert who knows a thing or two about crafting those perfect family giveaways, from exploring international destinations to planning multi-generational cruises that cater to everyone from toddlers to grandparents. Welcome to the show, Yvette. How are you? Oh my gosh, I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. And you're right, I am in this spectacular location. You just can't even believe it. It's so gorgeous. Uh, I think you're in a great location when the location happens to be the Bahamas. <laughs> how do I do this? Like, well, I want to be there. Uh, how do we like, okay, so let's begin. What are your top tips for gaining the most from a nice family vacation? Well, you know, you you mentioned the fact that, you know, people are planning their summer vacations now, and this is actually the ideal time to start thinking about it. I know it feels like it's way in advance, but the reality is people are traveling now more than ever. So you're going to get the best deals on airfare. You're going to get the best travel deals if you book with a little bit of anticipation, with like, like a little bit of forethought. So that's important. The second thing is you really want to try to think about what are those bucket list destinations that you may have um, and try to knock some of those off your list. You may want to visit Alaska. I know that's something my mom has always wanted to do or the Caribbean or, you know, uh, different countries in Europe. So you want to think about those and try to do those together with your family as much as possible to create those memories. Like you said, you know, time just goes so fast. And the third thing you really want to think about is if you are traveling with different generations, you want to try to find locations that kind of offer a little bit uh, for everyone in your family. I've made the mistake of dragging my kids throughout Europe from museum to museum, and it was not fun for me and it wasn't fun for them. So thinking about places that offer a little bit for everyone is really, really important. Can you share some family-friendly travel options? For sure. So we love road trips. We do road trips all the time. My husband's from Michigan, so we stop at little towns. We um, eat at different little restaurants, and I love doing that. We recently rented an RV, and that was super fun. Um, we went to visit my cousin in uh, Massachusetts and rented an RV. It was like a little bit of camping, a little bit of like, you know, family time. It was very, very cool. But my all-time favorite way to travel as a family is on a Disney cruise. And honestly, I think nothing beats the value that you get from a Disney cruise cruise because when you pay for your cabin, you have like all of your food is included, the entertainment, which is insane. It's like, you know, Broadway style shows, Broadway level shows, just um, unbelievable. But the best part about it are the kids clubs, which are just so cool. Just, I mean, so well designed. Everything about them is incredible. Just a couple of days ago, my kids were able to meet C-3PO in the kids club and the Oceaneers club and their minds were totally blown. So it's a really, really um, incredible way to just travel with a little bit for everybody. So how can family, uh, or planning a family vacation, how can we do that like in a hassle-free way? Well, I think that the biggest thing, you know, the biggest hassle I feel like when I'm planning my family's vacations is thinking about all of those activities, making sure that they're, that everyone is occupied and traveling on a Disney cruise takes all of that off your plate because literally you step on board, there's an app that has all the activities throughout the day and it's almost exhausting how much stuff there is to do that it's just like you could be busy all day long between, you know, the crafts that you can learn, um, the games you can play, the shows you can see, um, the food that you can eat. It's crazy. Your days are so super full. So if you are traveling with your family, there literally is something for everyone to do. And you can also have 24 hour room service, which is kind of crazy. And I don't know about you, but when I travel with like my extended family, the number one thing that we fight about is what we're going to eat and when we're going to eat. So this takes that off of everyone's plate. So I consider that hassle-free travel. So what are some of the things like the whole family could kind of do together? For sure. You know, so 
what I love about Disney cruises in particular is that there is something for everybody. So right now I'm in an adults only area, which is really elegant and just kind of muted and just very relaxing and very quiet. And then there are kid areas that are vibrant and fun and full of color. So there are literally things for everyone in your family here. And what I also love is that the activities, like actually excursions that are off the ship, are for everyone also. So they have, you know, for the adrenaline junkies, there's zip lining and all this cool outdoor stuff you can do. And then there's also all these cultural tours, culinary tours, um, historical tours. So really you can experience all those different cultures in a really deep way and in a very kind of like quiet way if you want to, or in a really fun, crazy, get out of your shell sort of way too. Yvonne Rios, thanks for joining me this morning. Where can we go for more information about any of this? Sure. You can go to DisneyCruise.com. And where can we follow you on social media? Oh, stop it. Really? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Where you? You can find me <laughs> on Instagram. It's Yvette, E-V-E-T-T-E -E 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 underscore Rios. Thanks for joining me uh, this morning, my friend. Thank you so much. Navigating the emotional and physical demands of caregiving, especially during the festive season, can feel isolating and a bit overwhelming. With a fresh survey revealing that nearly half of caregivers to loved ones with Alzheimer's or dementia feel submerged and unprepared. So joining us is Dr. Merle Griff, a respected family therapist and seasoned caregiver who brings up her professional insights and her personal journey to the table. Welcome to the show, Dr. Griff. How are you? Um, great. Thank you for having me, Dan. All right. What are some of the biggest challenges family caregivers tend to face? They feel very stressed. They feel overwhelmed. Uh, they're often lacking sleep. It also impacts very often their career or their jobs where they have to cut their hours or they may have to leave work. And this often results in a financial burden for them. So people are tapping into their retirement or their savings. Uh, they don't have enough uh, funds for necessities. The OATSCA survey found that about three quarters of family caregivers have to cut back on spending for food and for their own prescription medications. So how can we better support some of these family caregivers? By helping them. Uh, I think OATSCA feels very strongly, and they're rightfully so, that we don't often recognize the burden that the family caregivers have. And so sometimes just kind words saying to them, you're doing a great job. Um, my God, you take really, really good care of your mom and dad. Offering to help in some way, maybe running an errand or going to their home to sit with their family member while they're watching TV, or sometimes just sending a meal once or twice a month or sending a small gift, uh, like some little chocolate or flowers. It means a lot to a family caregiver. So where can we go for more information about this and how can we help our caregivers? We can go to the otska us Dot com re, uh, website. There is lots of great information there. In fact, they are getting ready to release a new film, animated film, for uh, children that really explains Alzheimer's disease. Because one of the issues family caregivers, especially of the sandwich generation, face is trying to explain this disease to their children. It's been very challenging, and uh, it's one of the best films I've ever seen for explaining uh, Alzheimer's disease to children. It's great. Thanks for joining me this morning, Dr. Griff. Oh, thank you for having me, Dan. Each Valentine's Day, the challenge is to, well, you know, beyond finding someone who actually loves you back, is to find that unique gift that expresses the feelings of love. Here with some timely suggestions is shopping expert Claudia Lombana, an Emmy and Peabody award-winning journalist who regularly analyzes shopping trends for network TV and including this show we like to call New Mexico Rising. Welcome to the show, Claudia. How are you? Thanks for having me on. I'm great. <laughs> Happy to be here. Uh, okay, so let's get started off. What kind of gifts are kind of trending this year for Valentine's Day? Well, 
you know, it's something unique. That's what you said, right? It's not just candy and flowers. We want to find something meaningful and memorable. And we're going to spend, as consumers, more than $14 billion this Valentine's Day, which is going to be a record number if that comes true. And it looks like it's going to. So we're spending about $185 each. So we want to make those gifts special, um, unique, and memorable. And that's what we're going to talk about today. All right. So what about a unique gift that could last probably a lifetime? I like this one for either to give a gift to somebody or maybe you do this together with your partner and that's a gift of learning a new language. Now with Rosetta Stone, this is really the perfect gift to give a meaningful experience to that special someone in your life. They have a lifetime unlimited subscription. It is 50% off right now so you can get that for under $200. It includes 25 different languages so you're never going to run out of ways to say I love you. An awesome gift if you're significant other loves travel or adventure, just wants to learn a new language from home and, you know, maybe learn that new language and then go travel to a place where they speak that language. So loving, loving, loving this gift from Rosetta Stone with the 50% off price at under 200 bucks. You can't beat it for a lifetime unlimited subscription. All right. Do you have any ideas for like personal health? Yeah, a lot of us start out the year with these personal health goals, and why not extend that into our Valentine's Day gifts? We can do that with Mary Ruth's Organics. Now, Mary Ruth's Organics is a unique gift, a good way to express affection in a health-conscious way, if you will. Their new best-selling liquid multivitamins are available in delicious flavors, including Coconut Dream and Peach Mango. These are vegan and sugar-free. These are available at The Vitamin Shop or at vitaminshop.com, which is the leading destination for lifelong wellness solutions. So a great way to kind of give the gift um, of, of health and in a health conscious way this Valentine's Day. What about a way to like create a memorable gift? I love a card, um, a handwritten card, something that has a special sentiment in it that came from the heart. Uh, we're going to up-level that this year with Adobe Express. Now, Adobe Express helps you create something a little more special. Whether it's a card, um, you can even do videos or social media content for your Valentines. There are thousands of beautifully designed templates to choose from. So this is really kind of a perfect way to flex your creative skills, maybe impress your crush. You you can even use AI, put in one simple line of text and the new AI powered Adobe Express will give you a unique design. Um, so really cool idea to create something special for our loved ones. What about for someone that's like a tech head? We do love our tech, right? Wearables. Wearables are always popular. This Valentine's Day, you can reach your health and fitness goals with Garmin's Venue 3 GPS smartwatches. Now, these have extended fitness insights, vibrant, beautiful um, AMOLED touchscreen display, 10-day battery life. You can pair the smartwatch with your smartphone to receive and take calls. The smartwatch has more than 30 built-in sports apps. So this is really like wearing a fitness coach right on your wrist. And best of all, right now, the Venue 3 GPS smartwatches from Garmin are $50 off for Valentine's Day. All right, Claudia, where can we go for more information and maybe even follow you on social media? Yeah, you can head over to tipsontv.com for more information on everything we talked about. And you can follow me on Twitter at C Lombana SF. Claudia Lombana, thanks for joining me this morning. Thank you. Happy Valentine's Day. Obesity is one of the top health threats that pets actually face. With a recent survey showing around 60% of dogs and cats are pretty much overweight and obese. So here to help our veterinarians, Drs. Bernard Hodges and Terrence Ferguson, who were recently nominated for an NAACP award and are a, a teaming up with Hills Pet Nutrition to help dogs and cats achieve and maintain a healthy weight. You may recognize them as the co-stars of the show Critter Fixers, Country Vets on Nat Geo Wild. Welcome to the show, Dr. Hodges and Ferguson. How are you two? Thank you. We're doing good. We're doing fantastic. All right. Tell us a little bit about concerning trend in pet health. Yes, pet obesity is definitely a growing epidemic. You know, but a big factor is awareness. Oftentimes, pet parents don't understand, you know, when their babies are a little bit obese. But that's why we're super excited to team up with Hills Pet Nutrition for their annual end pet obesity campaign. You know, we're going to get them all the tricks in the trade so they can keep their babies nice and healthy. So what does obesity mean for a pet? You know, we know that one of the main threats, you know, health threats to our animals is obesity or being overweight. Um, and we know that 
just one pound in our babies can be a big concern. You know, Dr. Hodge and I being veterinarians and on a daily basis, we see animals that come in that may be a little bit overweight or maybe obese, and they may not be feeling well. We run blood and they may have different diseases, like one being diabetes, which is why it's so important for us to be proactive in our weight management. So how can pet parents like figure out if their pet is overweight? You know, one of the beauties is he, with heels is they have these diagnostic tools or they have these different tools that can help us as veterinarians and help the uh, owners at home to help their babies, right? And one of the things they have is called the love test, L-O-V-E. And that L means locate the ribs. You know, we want to look at these babies and we don't want to see ribs. That means that we may be a little bit too thin, but we also don't want to have to press down very hard to feel them. The O is we want to observe from the top. We want to look and see if our baby has a nice little waist or we kind of straight on the side. The V is we want to view from the side and we're kind of looking for that same thing. You know, what is the shape um, of our pet? And the E, we want to evaluate our diet. You know, how often is the baby eating? Is it once a day? Is it twice a day? Is the cup that the veterinarian asks you to give, is it really a cup or is it a little bit more? Um, then we want to take these tools, we input them in the tools, the system that um, Heels has, consult with your veterinarian, and we come up with a um, plan and a diet for your baby. So how difficult is it to like manage a pet's, uh, pet's weight loss? You know, it doesn't really have to be very intimidating. Oftentimes, you know, we see our fur babies, they may look at us and think, hmm, I want some of that food. We just got to make sure that we manage it, you know, along with our veterinarians. You know, as veterinarians, you know, we put together, we put together plans with Heels. Pet dies all the time. So just make sure you consult with your veterinarian, come up with a great plan, and you should be just fine. So what are your top tips for pet weight loss and, and maintenance? You know, we definitely want to make sure the babies are active, right? And that's one of the things that we want to make sure we do. But if you think your baby is overweight, we want you to consult with your veterinarians because we know that one of the most important things is what do we feed our animals, you know? And for overweight pets, you know, Dr. Hodge and I, we often recommend heels, science diet, perfect weight nutrition, because we know that more than 70% of pets will lose weight within the first 10 weeks. And if your baby is obese, which we're a little bit heavier, uh, we definitely recommend heels prescription diet um, for the baby. But definitely consult your veterinarian, and we'll come up with a diet that, um, that would work for he or she. All right, where can people go for more information about any of this? Oh, you could just visit... Visit inpetobesity.com to learn about Hill's pet nutrition campaign so that you can keep your baby nice and healthy. All right, you two. Thanks for joining me this morning, Dr. Hodges and Ferguson. Thanks for having Thank us. You. Have you ever wondered about the lives of the millions of cats waiting in shelters and what it takes to give them a better life? Well, today we're going to be chatting about a, the heart of feline welfare with Hannah Shaw, who's also better known as the kitten lady, an advocate, educator, and best-selling author. Hannah will shed some light on the crucial role of health and cleanliness in shelters and introduce to us to the Cats Pride program, which is making a real difference by donating litter to needy cats. Welcome to the show, Hannah Shaw. How are you? Hey, thanks so much for having me. I'm great. I, I think I'm one of the very few morning shows that actually have their cats crawling around the entire time. So this is uh, something I, I, I got an interest in this. So how many cats are brought to shelters every year and uh, what is needed to kind of like take care of them? Yeah, so unfortunately, there are over 3 million cats entering shelters in the United States every single year, which, of course, for a cat lover like you, when we think about the cat that we have in our home, we love them so much, that number is very overwhelming. Um, these cats need all of the support that we can give to them. And uh, the great thing is that it's community members like me and you who can step up and help in a number of ways. Shelters really need people not just to adopt, but also to help out throughout the year with things like volunteering, fostering. I am fostering a litter of five kittens right now, and it's so fun. Um, I absolutely suggest that people sign up to foster. Um, but then, of course, you know, there is a huge need for donations and donations of supplies. Shelters go through a lot of supplies of food and bedding and toys and, of course, so much litter. So tell us about the Cats Pride program and uh, how do they donate litter to uh, shelter cats? Sure. So in honor of National Cat Health Month, there is a really cool program happening called Give Shelter Cats a Clean Start. And this is an initiative that is all about doubling down on the litter donations that they already do um, throughout the month of February 
for every single jug of the Cat's Pride antibacterial clumping cat litter uh, that is sold, they are going to be donating two pounds of litter to shelters in need. And I have to tell you, they've donated already over the course of this Litter for Good program, they do over 30 million pounds of litter to shelters. So that makes a huge difference. Um, You know, shelters need all of the support they can get. And those litter donations offset the costs for other things that are very important, like veterinary care. And it's National Cat Health Month, which is kind of like that time of year to remind ourselves, oh, yeah, we got to take care of our cats. Uh, what, what should like our us cat owners focus on to try to make sure their feline friends stay healthy? And I know we get busy throughout the year, so maybe this is the time to be like, do you know what? Holidays are over. Valentine, show your little fuzzy one some love. What, what, what should we do to make our felines stay healthy? Sure. So this is a great reminder to schedule that annual wellness visit for your cat. A lot of people don't take their cat to the vet until they are obviously sick, but cats can really hide their signs of illness. So going to the vet for an annual wellness visit is very important for everybody to do. There are other things that we can do to keep our cats happy and healthy in our homes. Obviously, good nutrition, um, having an enriching environment for them, engaging in interactive play with them. Cats want to be active, but you have to you know, play with them in an interactive way. Um, and then, of course, keeping an, the environment very sanitary. Um, this is another reason I love the antibacterial litter from Cats Pride, because it kills 99.9% of odor-causing bacteria. And, you know, when we're purchasing that litter this month and able to actually do a good thing for shelters at the same time, that is such a huge deal. Hannah Shaw, thanks for joining me this morning. Where can we go for more information? Sure. So you can visit catspride.com slash clean start to find out more about uh, this campaign and find a retailer near you. Hannah Shaw, thanks for joining me this morning. Thanks. Snow, cold, ice, blizzards. Those are all words we're kind of tired of hearing as winter is rolling on. If the winter blues are getting you down, you know, it might be time to think about a getaway to someplace warm, lush, and fun. Sarasota County on Florida's Gulf Coast might be the ideal spot to get outdoors and discover the beauty of a new destination. So joining us this morning from the gorgeous Marie Selby Botanical Gardens are... Jennifer Romanecki, President and Chief Executive Officer of Marie Selby Botanical Gardens, and Diana Shaheen, a Park Guest Experience Director at the Bay. Good morning, you two. How are you? Wonderful. We're in paradise. Come on over. Come on down. Over, yeah. yeah. It's easy for you to say. <laughs> You're like, come on over. To- I would love to get there. I- I'm- Do you know what? Planning now. This is a good idea to start thinking about this planning for where I'm going to go for this summer or very soon. Uh, Jennifer, you have some big news to share about the gardens. Uh, Can you tell us those big news today? Absolutely. So Maurice Selby Botanical Gardens is celebrating its 50th anniversary. And we're doing so by having opened the world's first net positive energy botanical garden complex meaning we're generating more energy than we consume. So the project consists of a new welcome center, a new plant research center, a garden to plate restaurant, a new gift shop, tons of garden features and water amenities, including a spectacular lily pond garden. And the entire complex will be net positive energy, as I mentioned, generating more energy than we consume So overnight, we become an international model for sustainability. So what are some exciting things visitors will find in the gardens? So Selby Gardens consists of 45 acres of bayfront sanctuaries, and we are particularly world-renowned for our orchid collection. So you will see spectacular orchids in flower in our conservatory throughout the grounds and up in the tree canopy. In addition, on view, we have an incredible interdisciplinary exhibit entitled Yayoi Kusama, A Letter to Georgia O'Keeffe. And this is an interdisciplinary show that puts these two iconic female artists in dialogue together in our botanical garden setting. And both of these artists' practice is rooted in nature. And so it's really exciting to put them in dialogue in the botanical garden 
where you will see original artworks as well as horticultural interpretations about both artists in our botanical garden setting. And the bay seems like it's being transformed as well. What can visitors expect there? Well, the bay is about a mile north of Selby Gardens. So after you come to the gardens, pop up to the bay, which is transforming 53 acres of mostly parking lot into a signature public park along Sarasota Bay. And what we say is the bay is one park for all, which means it's for kids of all ages and it's for um, visitors and locals alike. As well, we have 50 free events or more every single month, whether it's come to see a free movie under the stars or a concert or learn a new dance or attend a fitness class. And we even have free guided kayak tours. There's plenty of different spaces and places in the park, too, for you to get warm, which I know is something you probably want to do right now. Enjoy the wonderful Sarasota weather and, in fact, take in a spectacular sunset that happens almost nightly in Sarasota. And also beyond the bay and uh, the Mary Selby Gardens, there are other, like many other ways to explore the outdoors in Sarasota. What are some of your like personal favorites, the ones that you like to do that uh, give us outsider, some, uh, insider perspective, I guess? Uh, not an easy question to answer, Dan, because there's a lot to do here. Um, some of my favorites include biking, walking, and running on the Legacy Trail, which is a multi-use trail. It um, continuously uh, runs from Sarasota down past Venice, Florida. It's fantastic. I also love swimming in the Gulf of Mexico off of the white sandy beaches of the world-renowned Siesta Key. And I also love exploring the beautiful gardens and grounds of the Ringling Museum. All right, you two. Thanks for joining me this morning. Where can our viewers go for more information about any of this? So we encourage you to go to visitsarasota.com and you'll be able to learn all about our world-class beaches, incredible amenities, and the arts and culture scene since we are the culture coast here. So there's so much to see and do and visitsarasota.com highlights it all. So we hope that you'll come and join us in paradise. Jennifer, Diana, thank you, too, for joining me this morning. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Book your flight today. Oh, I will. Actually, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> and that is it for New Mexico Rising. I want to thank you for tuning in and checking out the show. If you actually want to be on the show, all you got to do is email me. That's newmexicorising at gmail.com. If you want to follow us on social media, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram. Just look up New Mexico Rising Television and go to our website. That's NewMexicoRising.com. Uh, right now, we have a couple of books on there from some authors. We're selling them for free. All you got to do is pay for shipping. So go to our website, NewMexicoRising.com. Until next week, that was New Mexico Rising. Hey Dan, I'm here at Elysium Therapeutics right now. We're getting ready to do a Thai massage pretty soon. This is Ludo, my therapy dog. So I started this business in 2018. Uh, I am a licensed massage therapist. I graduated from UTMI and my specialties are Thai table massage and Ashiatsu. Transform ordinary moments into extraordinary memories with our magical succulent bar. Whether it's a quiet moment of reflection or a first date, let the enchantment of nature enhance every occasion. Radiate positivity and create manifestations while making your very own magical succulent. Embrace the magic at Zinkstown, where we bring positivity to any occasion.